Hi, my name is Andrew Sadovoy. Welcome to Week 6 Software Testing for the course in Introduction to Interactive Programming by Joe Warren, John Greiner, Stephen Wong, and Scott Rixner. Uh, there are already a bunch of good tutorials on classes and oops, so I'm going to skip that enti entirely. Uh, instead, I'm going to focus on a subject we touched on this week in the mini project, namely software testing. Uh, recall that the mini project provided some links to testing templates. Um, here's one. And here we see a test harness to allow you to test the card class. So how it works is you paste your code in and then run it. And the template creates card objects and calls methods on those objects. The results are printed and you can then compare the results to expected results in the comments at the end of the template. This is a fine approach for the mini project. It's free code provided by the instructors so you should definitely take advantage of it. Uh, what I want to do is show you some of the drawbacks using this approach in general, in production, um, on larger projects, and give you some tools to work with going forward. So um, the, I'm going to list two drawbacks, but there are probably others. So first of all, you have to copy and paste your code into another file. Then you run your tests and fix bugs in the copied code, and now the copy has changes in it that are not in the real code. You must manually manage this, and that will lead to bugs overlooked. Secondly, um, these are active test results, meaning after you run the test, you must actively look at each of the results and compare them to expected values. This is time consuming and cumbersome. Um, and that means you won't do it in, in reality. And um, s running tests should be so fast and easy that you can run them many, many times per hour um, and quickly get results. And uh, preferably do this once after each small change to your code. That's only two drawbacks. Like I said, there's, there's going to be others. Um, so we can do better. We can provide uh, we can put test code directly in the mini project file and this removes the need for copy and pasting code and we could put each test in a method and have that method check the results for us only failures will be printed so let's look at some code so here we see um, the original test harness provided by the instructors um, I've already pasted the, the uh, card class in so when I run it, you can see what happens. So um, here's the results, and here's the expected results that were provided. So I have to check that each line over here matches over here, um, and so forth. This is the, uh, my first attempt at uh, converting the test harness into something a little more automated. So again, I have the card class here. And then uh, what I've done here is I've just I've wrapped my, um, the GUI code that would normally just be, uh, that would normally just run every time I run this. Um, I've wrapped it in a, inside this main class. Uh, so that when I, it, it just makes it easier for me to disable all of this code while I'm testing it. Dis, 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 excuse me, to disable just this section of code, uh, because all I have to do is comment out this line, um, and that means that I can test, and then uh, later on when I'm when I'm finished my testing, I can comment out the test and leave the the main code uh, operational. Okay, moving on. Um, so now I have this card tester class and then several card test classes. And as you can see what I've done is in the car each card test class has one of the tests that were in the original file. And then card tester instantiates each one of these card test classes in a list. So we end up with a list of these test test objects. And then I just loop through each of those objects, and I call the test method on each one. And when I run this, again, I get the same results that I got before. Okay, And again, I now have to manually check. But um, I don't have to copy card 
into a different file. So that addresses the first drawback that I mentioned. So here's my final um, version of this code. So uh, first I want to show you this compare function uh, that'll be used later. So what it does is it, expect, it uh, takes two parameters, expected and actual. It compares these two values. If they're not equal to each other, it returns a list that contains these two values. Otherwise, it returns true. So simple enough. And now let's see how it gets used. So here in card test one, I've changed the test method. So now, instead of printing out values, what it's doing is building this expected value here. And that's just a string. And you'll notice that it's a string made up of um, the, the values that were in the original template file in the comments. Um, and each one is just separated by space. Okay. And then I build this actual. And it's made up of calling str calling the string the stir function on uh, each of the various values that we want to see in the in the output so originally we were printing c1 now we're just converting it to a string originally we were printing the suit and the rank and now we're just converting them to a string and it, I, again uh, before we were printing the type of C1 and now we're just converting it to a string. And we just take all those strings and we concatenate them all together into one long string. And the hope is that that value will be the same as this. Okay, And so now I have my expected and my actual values and I pass them to a call to compare. Okay, And recall that compare is going to either return true if the two values are the same, or it's going to return a list containing those two values. Okay, so that's how te card test 1 works. And card test 2 and card test 3 are pretty much identical. They work very, very similarly. Okay. So now we can look at card tester and see how I changed it. So, um, so first of all, I print out the name of card tester here. And then, like before, I build this list of test objects, okay, and assign it to this test uh, variable. And then next, I um, set this test passed uh, variable to true. And then I loop through all my tests and I uh, assign the result of calling each one's test method to this result variable and then I check the value of result and if it's not true so remember that result is indirectly coming from this compare function okay and remember that it is either going to return true or it's going to return a list so if result is not equal to true, then we know that it's a list. Okay, so the first thing we know that the test didn't pass because if it did, then it would be true. So the first thing we do is we say that at least one test passed or failed rather. Okay, and then uh, I just print out the test number. So test i plus one failed, and then um, I print out the expected value and then I print out the actual value. Okay, And then after my loop, if this value is true, then that means that this line never never ran, which means that all the tests passed. So in which case I just want to say that all the tests passed. Okay, So now when I run it, here we see we see card tester, we see, oh, there's a problem with test 1, test 1 failed, Okay, and then we see the expected and actual values. Okay, so we know immediately that test one failed. We know um, we can see the difference. 
So we know that this is what actually happened, what actually return, was returned by the, uh, the, the code that we're testing. And we know that this is what we're expecting, so we can see exactly where the issue is. It's right here. This S is missing from the output here. Now, as it turns out, this is, this is what's incorrect. This actual code, or this actual result, is correct. This is wrong. That means that there's a problem in my test. So I will go and I will fix my test by removing it. Okay. So now when I run my code, oh, all my tests passed. Okay. So, benefits. Notice we can tell at a glance whether the tests pass. And if they fail, we know exactly which tests failed and why. Or we can figure out why pretty quickly. Um, later, if we change our card class code, we can run our tests and be confident that if our changes broke anything, the tests are going to find those problems. Okay. Now, you can use this same approach with the other provided test templates for hand and deck in the mini project. Um, and you can also add your own tests. So once you learn this idiom, it's, it's pretty easy to add tests that work for you and that um, really help you figure out whether or not your code is doing what you want it to do. Okay, So I hope you see the value of software testing. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. In practice, there are tools that automate much of the process so that all you will have to do is write the test methods. So all you have to do in practice, really, is write these methods. Okay, The rest of this what I've shown you here is, is you know, like this method and this card tester class. This is, you know, um, it's already provided uh, by other tools, so you won't have to write this every time. But it's nice to know that even without those tools, you can write your own self-testing code using what I've shown you here. So I hope you enjoyed this, and thanks for watching.